Hey, what's going on, my fellow bass players, face makers, and future rock stars? In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about three major mistakes that I see a lot of bass players make, especially beginner bass players. But guess what? We're going to fix those today, so stay tuned. All right, guys, if you don't know, Derek here from DerekBennett.com. Like I said in the beginning, just wanted to talk about a few mistakes that I see a lot of bass players making, uh, uh, especially beginners. Uh, don't get me wrong, a lot of season, well, it's not the right word. Now, season uh, experienced a lot of experienced bass players uh, make these same same mistakes um, as well that I'm getting ready to show you but anyway uh, we can fix that like I always say it's never too late to grow so we can always fix those bad habits um, it's just depending on how bad you want it okay so <clears throat> let's jump right into it so first mistake number one <laughs> number one is finger or hand placement okay so in the beginning, when I have a new student, when I have a beginner um, that's first learning how to play bass, don't even know what a bass is, don't know what the strings are, don't know what anything is called. <laughs> very new, very fresh. All right, we start off with hand positioning, how to hold the bass. First things first, right? Start with the basics. Positioning, right hand technique, left hand technique, literally how to hold the bass. And that's more, that's so much more important than people make it, right? Some people don't really pay too much attention on your position or your posture, right? But that plays so, that plays such a big role uh, in your playing and how comfortable you are, uh, especially with endurance and stamina. I get those kind of questions all the time. Some people ask me, oh, my hand is hurting after I'm practicing. Uh, what can I do? Um, but sometimes it's your technique. Sometimes it's your posture. Sometimes it's uh, uh, your position. But anyway, your hand position. So what I mean. <clears throat> so if you ever seen anybody play like this. Right. If you notice what my fingers are doing, my fingers are so slanted right here. Right. They're at such an angle. And my hand is pretty closed, almost like I'm making a fist. Right. But you don't want your hands to be closed. You want it to be open. But did you, that was a small move. Did you catch that? I might. I need to rewind it. But you don't want your hands to be closed. You want it to be open. <laughs> but did you catch that? When I opened my hand, I got so much more. I covered so much more space. Even down here, it doesn't matter. I just opened my hand. But this, the movement is literally just a close and open type of thing. Right. But you're going to do what feels comfortable with for you uh, when you're first starting, especially if you don't know, if you don't have that guide, you're going to feel, you know, this. is All right. This is, you know. It's very hard for me to play like that, by the way. Anyway, uh, but you're going to feel you're going to do what's comfortable for you, but it might be hurting you in the long run. So all you have to do is literally just open up your hand and it's a small movement. If you can see the back, I wish you could see the back of my uh, my neck. But if you see the movement, when my hand is closed, my thumb is literally parallel with the fretboard. But that's what makes that that's what makes that slanted type of uh, positioning. So all I did was open my hand and move my thumb down so that's, that it's crossing the fretboard. All right. Just it's just a, it's a small move, but it's very effective. Trust me. Uh, these small little intricate things uh, can literally make or break you because your hand can be getting tired. You can only play for about 10 minutes and then you're done. You're trying to figure out why. And this might be one of the reasons why. So like I said, hand placement, hand position, it can definitely help you just opening up your hand. Just just pay attention the next time you play. See how your hand is. See if it's see if you're a closed <laughs> bass player, closed hand bass player or open hand bass player. And you'll see. And I kind of adapted that a lot from playing uh, the double bass or upright bass um, a lot in school. And, you know, uh, was I? was I was in grade school like middle school high school I was playing upright bass and that positioning you have to be almost spot on with the positioning because the frets you have to be very precise with where the frets are you have to know so your positioning has to be you know pretty spot on but anyway I kind of adapted that and just kind of brought it down to electric bass but anyway <laughs> I'm rambling on but hand placement that's the number one mistake that I see these are not in any order, by the way. But anyway, so let's move on. I think we got that one hand placement. So number two, and this one is very closely related to number one. Uh, remember, when I was talking about closed hand, open hand, right? That kind of thing to be able to create more space, more area between uh, your first finger and your fourth finger. Right. So this goes right along with it. If you see somebody playing or even even yourself, just catch yourself. If you see yourself playing like this, you normally don't use your fourth finger as much as you should. 
just admit it admit it yeah admit it you you don't use it as much <laughs> no, i'm just joking but anyway you don't you might not use it as much as you should right you might see this kind of thing with your fourth finger being tucked behind the the fretboard right that's what you don't want right it makes it harder on yourself don't stress yourself out all right if you have another finger to work with <laughs> and you can use it why not use it right don't hinder yourself from being the three finger guy um and i think i have a lesson called literally called the don't be the three don't be that three finger guy i think something like that but i'll put the link up here so you can go watch it um you can watch it now or uh wait till after this is done and go check it out but anyway very cool lesson it's, an, it's actually an exercise but don't be the three finger guy right so don't be that guy that's just playing with the three fingers and if you're asking about dexterity and you're asking about speed and precision and you know all of that kind of stuff and even stamina endurance and you know that kind of thing i'm not sure if i said that but you can't play you can't expect to play with just three fingers and be the fastest guy in the world right be the fastest player in the world or the most efficient player in the world you can't ask for that right not not that you want to be the fastest but you want to be you know mo the most efficient uh or more efficient with your playing so to be able to utilize that fourth finger as much as you possibly can and trust me trust me trust me i know i was i was that three finger guy at one time but i just kind of promised myself that i would use my fourth finger so much more and i think now i use my fourth finger i get made of uh made fun of some of my buddies now make fun of me because i use my fourth finger so much uh, and i realized that the fourth finger was um a lot more weak or just weaker than uh than my first finger so i would on purpose use my fourth finger a lot uh and a lot of grip strength exercises help with that as well but anyway number two is don't be that three finger guy uh, i'll put the link back up here if you want to go check it out but anyway that was number two you always want to be able to utilize those three fingers oh sorry excuse me get that out of my brain now you always want to be able to utilize your four fingers all right all four fingers pinky fourth finger, whatever you want to call it as well. All right. So, and I think just a quick story, I know I'm rambling though, um, <laughs> but I told you in the beginning, I'm going to be talking about uh, three mistakes, not too much playing here. But anyway, um, I really noticed that when I tried to play Portrait of Tracy and I was playing the the harmonic, the E flat harmonic uh, that he hit in the beginning of the song. And it was, what is it? Uh, that harmonic right there. I could, if I, if I was a three finger guy, you think I will be able to hit that or anybody? Would anybody would be able to hit that? Do you think that would be possible? Of course not. So you have to open up those, your hands and uh, get that technique down and really stretch your hands out. And if, if you don't think you have a good stretch right now, once you start doing these exercises and techniques and really paying attention, the more you play, the further your stretch will get, right? Anyway, that was number two, let's move on. All right, number three, as you can see, I switch bases <laughs> just for the cause of this third uh, demonstration. But mistake number three is thinking that you have to have a high end bass or a very expensive bass to be able to sound good. And that is so far from the truth, so far from the truth. I was actually guilty of this. I thought when I first started playing, oh, I got to have this bass or I got to have his bass. Oh, I need Jocko's bass. Oh, yeah, I need Victor Wooten's bass. I need, you know, I need a Federa. I need... It's, it's not that. Stop thinking that. Get it out your mind. <laughs> to be able to sound decent, to be able to get your technique correct, to be able to enhance your playing, you can play on anything. You should be able to play anything. I bet you your most, your most favorite bass player can pick up any bass and still sound good. If he's a good bass player. Right? Not trying to toot my own horn, but... I've spent time in the shed. I've practiced. I know my technique. I know my strengths, right? To be able to know that my tone comes from my hands and not just from the bass. Now, don't get me wrong. Having a good bass or having a great bass made by an uh, amazing luthier definitely enhances your sound of your playing. But it doesn't change your technique. It doesn't change your style. It doesn't change your inflections. It doesn't, it doesn't change that. You should have that within yourself and you should be able to pick up any bass and still sound like you. Get it? All right. So, like I said before, I was guilty of this and it, you can't it, it'll hinder your playing. You can't it, it'll cause you not to be able to progress or think that you can't progress because you don't have this 
or not practice because I'm not good enough or I won't be good enough because I don't have that, that bass or this amp or these strings or, you don't you, you, you understand, you get what I'm saying. You don't have to be able to, ha you don't have to have that stuff to be able to sound decent. The thing about it is it's not the bass, it's the player. I'll say that again. It's not the bass, it's the player. And like I said, knowing that your tone comes from your hands, uh, you can't hinder yourself. You can't stop yourself from progressing just because you think you don't have what the next guy has or the greatest bases out there. And like I said before, I know, it, it, don't get me wrong, a great bass, I have my custom bases, right? I have my, you know, I have my Elric bass, I have my BL, uh, BLD bass, right? I have other bases. But the thing is, I choose to play this one, and people ask me, oh, trust me, oh, God, I get chewed out all the time, emails and everything. Why are you playing that crappy bass? They're talking about this one. But at the same time, they ask me, why are you playing that crappy bass and sounding so good? How are you making that bass sound so good? And it's, just, it's, it's like what I just said. It's not the bass, it's the player. All right, guys, so that's it for this rant that I'm going on. Uh, if you're still here, I really appreciate you staying tuned in. Uh, trust me, uh, it means a lot to me. Um, but anyway, I just wanted you guys to be aware of these three mistakes, especially the last one, because it can, it can really do some damage to you because, you know, quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option because it can really cause you to be, you know, depressed about your playing. And, and that's uh, that's something serious, you know, and I went through something similar like that where I just sold all my stuff because I just kind of quit. Um, but luckily I picked it back up and I'm, this is what I'm doing now. All right. If you're new here and haven't subscribed to this channel yet, I'll put a subscription button right here. You can go ahead and click that and be notified of whenever I post. And I also put a website link uh, to DerekBennett.com where you can get tons more material like this. Um, even free material. You can start your uh, three day free trial. You can get access uh, to all of the goodies on the website. Take all of these things into consideration, uh, really analyze how you're playing and be self-aware of how you're playing. And like I say all the time, when you're practicing, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear and precise. And until next time, I'll see you.